it's one of the great tragedies of our society, of our human life, uh, in the way that we encourage relationships and friendships to primarily be built around affinity, similarity instead of difference. For while I do believe that we all carry an innate curiosity for difference, it's undeniable that our social systems encourage solidarity with those who are like us, the people that we are permitted to spend time around. For many of us, especially those who are white, that primary affinity is race or ethnic origin. I'm sure those of us who grew up Lutheran 40 to 50 years ago can remember that you weren't supposed to associate with Catholics or the wrong kinds of Lutherans, even. Maybe that's still going on now. But even so, all forms of sameness are still prioritized in the way that we organize ourselves socially, whether it's when we say that boys suppo are supposed to hang out with boys or girls are supposed to hang out with girls. I'm not exactly sure what non-binary people are supposed to do. I'm still figuring that one out. Uh, but just hanging out with people of the same gender or maybe of the same class or education level, same religion, right expression of that religion, or even just spending time with the people who like the same things that we do. Do. For while diversity is appreciated as a broad concept by our contemporary society, in common practice, we tend to prioritize relationships with people who are like us, who think like us, who feel like us, who have the same interests or backgrounds as us, who have the same gifts as us. And as a result, our world is suffering from an epidemic of isolation and alienation and separation where people marked as different than the norm or even different than us are kept apart. And that apartness just gets more and more common and we are in more danger than ever because when difference is only appreciated in theory, then forced similarity, conformity, forces our lives, ourselves, our communities into the limitations of increasingly small categories where the possibilities of difference are replaced by the obligations of sameness. But love, God's reconciling love, thrives in possibilities, but is incompatible with obligation. And that brings us to Elemental. Where in this wonderful movie, we see the story of Ember and Wade. Ember is a fire element whose parents immigrate to Element City, the metropolis where fire, water, air, and earth elementals all live together, only to be met with anti-immigrant prejudice, specifically against fire elementals. In a city that claims to love diversity, but in reality prioritizes and privileges similarity and sameness, the idea being that elements cannot mix. And Ember's parents labor, making countless sacrifices for their family to create a life for their family and their wider community against all adversity, so that when the time comes for Ember to inherit her father's store, she feels obligated to accept her inheritance even though she does not want it because she feels like she has to repay her sacrifice. Not her sacrifice, her parents' sacrifice. And what she feels like she has to inherit is an obligation that is rooted in limitations of herself. The obligation to be the same as her parents. The obligation to inherit a store. The obligation to only trust other fire elements. And the pressures of these obligations to conform causes her to struggle to keep from exploding in a great fireball of rage as she tries to suppress her emotions. But, of course, we know what happens when you try to suppress emotions. They explode. <laughs> and so Ember does, and that leads her to meet Wade, who is her complete opposite a water elemental whose family has been quite comfortable in elemental, or Element City, having immigrated there long ago. Now he has freedom and possibilities to be whoever he wants to be. He can make mistakes. His mom lets him do whatever he wants to do, find his own dreams. He is open with his emotions, maybe excessively so, crying frequently and freely, uh, and is open to the many different ways that the Element Cities, fire, water, wind, and earth citizens can live and laugh and love together. 
And over the course of their story, they struggled to come to terms with their different experiences of life, while also discovering the creative possibilities that come from the combination of fire and water. The creative interaction of their difference in the end of the story, I don't want to spoil the entire thing, Uh, it is a Disney movie though, Uh, but it ends up leading them to save Ember's parents' shop, than the sacred fire that ties her parents and her to their homeland. But it also forces Ember to confront the reality that her dream is not an obligation. It is not inheriting her family's story. It is not only spending time with other fire elements. It is not a life of obligation, but her dream is to embrace her difference, embrace the differences of others, and embrace the full range of possibilities that come from freedom and love. Elemental is a beautiful story, especially in the way that it lifts up the struggles of immigrants and their descendants when they are forced to assimilate into a culture of conformity. But it also tells of the possibilities that rise when we let go of those obligations and instead embrace what makes us different. Instead of relying upon similarities, conformity, to unite us. Near the climax of the film, Ember admits that there is no way to repay a sacrifice as great as her parents made for her without sacrificing her own life too. And that's a tragedy. That's how deep The trauma of conformity runs in all of us, whether in our own lives or in the lives of our ancestors who carry the deep, deep wounds of trauma in our bodies from when we or our ancestors, often both, were forced to conform against our will into a society that was rooted in strict categories of sameness. I grieve often for how my family no longer knows a word of Norwegian or Swedish or German because our heritage was lost as we were compelled to conform in the same way that I was compelled to conform while growing up in a town and also a Christian culture that was unwilling to receive my difference. And so to this day, I still feel obligated to continue sacrificing my own life, my joy, my passion, my difference at the altar of conformity because I feel like I need to keep making these sacrifices that came before me because I need to make those sacrifices that came before me mean something because they sacrificed their own life so that I could be here today. So if I'm not willing to sacrifice my own life, then what was it all for? Except that the message that we receive from the love and grace of Jesus Christ is that we don't need to sacrifice our own lives. Only one sacrifice was required to accomplish all of the work of love, and that was the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, whose death gives us all everlasting love, and whose resurrection, whose life, gives us all everlasting life. And this sacrifice is a gift that cannot be repaid, not even with our own lives, and it should not be repaid for any attempt to repay Jesus' sacrifice is putting ourselves in the place of God, making us responsible for saving the world instead of trusting that God has already saved us and freed us. For Jesus did not sacrifice his life so that we would be obligated to repay him, but so that we may be free. And we know that when Jesus sets, our free, or sets us free, then we are free indeed. And we are free indeed to know that in God, all things are possible. We have not been set free to sacrifice. We have been set free to be free, to love in the way that love can only thrive through possibilities rather than through obligations. And this is what sets Ember free in Elemental, when she realizes that her parents' sacrifice was not an obligation to sacrifice her own life, but a gift freely given. She finds the freedom to love freely, open, abundantly, to embrace the possibilities that come from her difference, whether or, and also the difference of ways over emotional tendencies, or her own ability to create that wonderful Pacific Northwest art form of glass. 
uh, that allows her to unique difference, her gifts to serve both her people in the fire part of the city, but also the many different people of Element City. It is freedom, not obligation, that allows love to reign in the world. It is freedom, not obligation, not a legacy of sacrifice, but the trust in the sufficiency of Jesus's sacrifice that allows us to live with the love that we choose to express through our unique differences rather than the love to which we must conform. It means that all that we really do need is love, but that love does not come from the sacrifices we make to conform or to force other people to conform, but that love comes from the freedom we receive in Jesus Christ alone and in the gifts of the Holy Spirit that allow us to love as God has uniquely created us to love. So as Heidi asked, how do we do that? Because that's hard. It's really, really hard to break the patterns that have got in, ingrained in us, ingrained in our bodies, to say no to that feeling of obligation that is not just coming from us in, or to us in the present, but is coming to us from centuries of past practices of sacrifices and obligations. It is seemingly impossible to avoid conformity and even harder still, perhaps, to avoid imposing conformity upon others because we've been conditioned to prioritize sameness and similarity. So how do we actually trust in the freedom that comes from Jesus's only sacrifice? If I may speak directly to the adults for a second, you know all too well the sacrifices that you make every day and have had to make every day of adulthood that have often gone unappreciated. And all of these sacrifices were made for the up and coming generations to get to where we are today. And I can imagine that it's frustrating for many of us, and I yes, I do use us, I'm an adult too, don't always act like it. <laughs> to see younger generations make different decisions, live and love in different ways, or perhaps even live in ways that seem irresponsible to us, dangerous even, to reject the security and the safety and the conformity, the simplicity that we worked so hard to accomplish for them. And let me be clear, I do not think that trusting in the sufficiency of Jesus' sacrifice means that we were necessarily wrong to make the sacrifices that we made and still do make today because we had to make those sacrifices to keep ourselves safe. A lot of the sacrifices that you have made, that I have made, that we have made, were done to keep ourselves safe and to keep the people that we love safe. That's not fair, but it is the world that we live in. We know that this world is one that we have to fit into to survive. It is a world that is in bondage to sin and does not live in accordance with the free love of God. But... I do think that it means that we need to have the courage to let the legacy of sacrifices go and give permission to the up and coming generations to bring their difference fully and wholly into the spaces that we control and occupy because we are lesser without the perspective that they can only bring when we lift up the possibilities of the spirit and let go of the obligations of conformity because the young look to the old for permission to see whether they will be allowed to bring their difference or be required to make sacrifices and conform. This is what happens in Elemental. And the scene that brings tears to my eyes is when Ember's father does indeed recognize that his expectations for her have brought her into this anxious, traumatized state. And he lets those expectations go and gives her the permission to be who she fully and freely is. And imagine the place the church and the world will be when it is transformed by the full gifts of the God-given difference of the younger generation and of us too. When we let go of relying upon our own sacrifices and learn to trust in the freedom that comes from Jesus' sacrifice. But now I want to talk to the kids directly, wherever you are, even if you're playing with balls over there, that's fine. 
I imagine that it's just as hard for you and us, because I'm still a kid in some ways, to make all of the sacrifices that you are required to make to fit into a world that is designed for adults and is built to turn you into an adult, often at the cost of your brilliant differences. So often these sacrifices also go unnoticed or are diminished, called insignificant because they are different from the sacrifices that adults have to make. Whether they be the sacrifices that you make to fit in to a very hostile social system in the school world, or maybe the sacrifices that you make to succeed in school and sports, the sacrifice of staying silent when you wish that you could make your needs known, I'd like you to know this truth that I have learned on this kind of precipice of childhood and adulthood. Adults don't want you to make these sacrifices. We're just afraid of what will happen when you dare to be different. And we're afraid that we won't be able to protect you when you live into your difference. But know this even more important truth. You have been created by God, saved by Jesus Christ, and filled with the love of the Holy Spirit to be exactly who you are in all of your beautiful difference. And when you live into that difference, you are set free to love the world in the way that only you get to. And you will never know that better than you do from a child's perspective. So you don't need to sacrifice anything anymore if you don't want to. Because the church exists as a community of people who are thoroughly, thoroughly different. United by only one similarity. The only similarity which we need, which is our mutual reliance on the love and gift of Jesus' sacrifice. That does not obligate us to repay a debt. That doesn't ask us to conform to a very strict way of living. But sets us free to lift up one another's differences and enjoy the holy possibilities that come from loving one another as God loves us. So kids, lead the way. Like Ember and Wade, create glass, create friendships through difference, create possibilities from obligations. So are you, or so, so you are called to be free to love in the spirit of difference. Let me try that one time again because I got messed up by my syntax. (laughs) Kids, I want you to lead the way like Ember and Wade create glass. I want you to create friendships through difference. I want you to create possibilities from obligations because you are called to be free by your creator who loves you so that you can love in the spirit of difference and you can trust that we adults will be right behind you to support you and before you to open up the doors. We wouldn't mind if you steal the show from us. For by trusting in the ways that God has made you different and by daring to love the difference of all people in the world, you show us how how Jesus has set us all free so that we may love one another. Not because we are obligated to sacrifice love to conformity, but because we get to trust that Jesus' sacrifice alone reconciles all things and frees us to love one another into the beautiful future where God's love is perfected in us. Thanks be to God.